Hello and welcome back to Coding with Unity. Today, I'll be showing you how to use the A-Star algorithm to draw paths with road tiles with the Unity tile map system. As you can see, when you click, the road will draw to where you click with your mouse. Then, if you use the middle mouse button, you can erase the road path. You can then also add in a new start and end location with the current system by using the right click button. If I was to right click here and then click here, we'll have a nice path from these two houses. How the current system is set up, the new start position will be set at the end of the last road position, so clicking in your next spot will draw your path to the next location. Continuing on, you can continue to draw the path wherever you would like. Now, this is more set up for a demo explanation of how this works, but you could easily control this path generation based off of certain points on your map. But how this currently works is, we have a layer called walkable, and when you turn it on, you can see this red layer. The red tiles are the layers the tile map is allowed to walk across. The reason I set it up this way is so we don't have to do any coding for when we have objects like this to figure out if the object on a single tile map renderer going up multiple tiles should be walkable or not walkable. Doing it the way I've implemented makes it very simple to work around this. You just draw where you want to be able to walk. Now in the description of this video, I will have a download link to my Grid Manager CS class and my ASTAR.CS class. In the Grid Manager class, we are simply getting our tile map and the tile map we want to draw our road on. The first tile map is our walkable layer. The second tile map is the layer the road will be drawn on. If we go into play, I'll demonstrate what I mean. So, the walkable layer is the red layer that we can turn off during gameplay because we do not need to see it. Only the code needs to know about the walkable layer. But on the roadmap layer is the layer that the road is drawn onto when you click to draw a path. You could draw this onto a different layer such as your world layer, but it would either overlap these tiles or maybe not be the correct order positioning and layer that you would want it to be. If my tower was one tile higher, the way I have it set up, it would not sh draw over the road. We can draw in one more tower to show what I mean. You can see that the road draws behind that tower. But going back into the code, all it is doing is on start, we will be compressing the bounds of the walkables layer and compressing the bounds of the roadmap layer so that the next step in the program will be easier for it to run. We will then create the grid using spots, which is a new vector 3 int based off the bound size x and bound size y of our tile maps cell bounds. We then do a double for loop through it and we will create a new spots ij of a vector 3 int at the position x, y with a height of 0 if it has a tile or a has a drawn walkable layer or 1 if it does not have a drawn walkable layer. The reason that we are using spots ij and then vector 3 int x, y is so that our spots will start at 0, 0 and work up to the end of our bound.size.x increasing by 1 every single time we loop through our bounds. And then we push our x and our y position so that we know the actual positions of the tile in the map. Going into our A-star file, we can see more what I mean. 
When the A star file is created using A star equals new A star, the spots, the bound size X and the bound size Y, we will create spots equals new spot, which uses a class that holds the F, G, H, X, Y, and height and the neighbors of the A star algorithm. After creating our list of spots that are coinciding to the grid manager, when a path is created using our left mouse button, we will create a new grid to make sure if the grid was updated, the path that we are going to draw will coincide with the newly updated grid. If your world is static and nothing will ever update, you can take this out. And you could also move certain code in the A star file into the setup file, namely this. There may be a few other things you might have to change, but this should be the core of what needs to be moved to start if your world is static. We'll now get a the world position of our mouse's position's input. We'll then take that input and do a tile map dot world to cell to get the cell position from the world position of your mouse input. Then we will clear any current road path for we do not overlap or have a messed up drawing of our new road path. Then the road path will be equal to a star dot create path using the spots that we set up and the start location, which is wherever you right clicked with your mouse, and then the end location, which is wherever you left clicked with your mouse. Giving it a distance of 1000 should make it to where our path is not capped. But say you have a unit that can only move five positions per turn. You could change this to a five and your tile map will never draw a road that is longer than five positions. Then here we just make sure that our road path, our a star dot create path returned a path. If it didn't, we don't want to do anything else. And if it did return something, we will draw the road and then set the start position to the end of the road path. Draw road is simply a for loop through the road path dot count and we will set a tile at each position of the road path. I have another video that explains better how to use the a star code but for this video I'm just showing how to set it up. If you want to understand better the A star system, you can follow the link to my other video. So if we go back into our Unity project, we could draw a new map very simply. Let's just turn these off. We will now create a new tile map. We'll call this one World 2. Going into our tile palette, I'll select this rule tile and the rectangle butt brush and draw in some path areas. We'll use a pretty simple path for this demonstration. Add in maybe a town building. We need a world decor so it doesn't mess up the layer below it. So we'll create a new tile map. We'll call this one World Decor. Go back into your tile palette, switch your active tile palette or active tile map to World Decor. We will then place a building here to give it a nice path around that building down here and then up to here. Set your order and layer to 1 so you don't get any Z fighting issues. Then we will create a new walkables layer. We'll call it walkables 2. Going into our tile palette, switching the active tile map to walkables 2. Going back to the inspector, make the color red and lower the alpha so we can see through it. Back into the tile palette, select whichever tile you want. It is really irrelevant which tile you use. Choose your rectangle tool and draw the tile palette over the area that you want. Go back into your inspector, change your order and layer to make sure it's always the top layer, and go ahead and finish drawing off your walkables area. After drawing the walkables area, go into your grid. Make sure that these are back where they were, or 
make sure that your references are referencing the correct things. For our roadmap, we need to create a new tile map for the roadmap. We'll call it roadmap2. Going back into the grid, we'll override roadmap with roadmap2, walkables with walkables2, and then the road tile will leave as the current road tile. What the road tile is, is just a rule tile set up with road sprites, nothing more. Going back into here, we can click play and see if everything works. We have our start at 0, 2, but let's override it somewhere where we want it. Let's try here at negative 6 and 9. Let's try to draw our path to here. First, let's turn off the walkables layer so the map looks nicer. Ah, make sure to change your road map order and layer to make sure that your road shows up. After doing that, you can see that we have a road. Let's erase it and redraw it so we can actually see it being drawn. We'll put the new start position in the bottom corner and we'll draw it to here. Let's now try to draw a path from here to here. If we just select our camera and manually move it over to here and then click, you'll see that a path is drawn nicely around the little village through this little corridor and up to the top of this section of the path. As I said before, all of the scripts in this video will be in the description below, but the Graphic assets were not mine, but I will have a link to where I downloaded them also in the description below. The assets will be in the package that you download for the project also, but I think it is correct to link the original source of the artwork. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll be able to use this, and in later videos I'll show you how to implement other things with this, such as auto drawing the path when the game starts, or not drawing roads with this but moving characters across a path, or using it to draw a road and then making sure your character follows that drawn road. But until then, have a wonderful day.